Perfect. So after the recording is um, is complete, we will upload it to our NIAX YouTube page, which you can go to now if you're interested, and you will find uh, a new playlist just for this course. And we will also send a link to that link uh, YouTube video in a follow up email, and then I will embed it within our um, adaptation workbook so that it will be there if you needed to quickly find it while you're working through things. So welcome. Uh, you know, you've probably received most of your your messages from myself. I'm Danielle Shannon on the bottom row, but taking part in this course and we'll be helping all of you uh, throughout the next of weeks. So you'll hear from all of these folks during each of our lectures. We're going to split up the lecture duty and um, you know you'll hear different voices throughout the course. Some of us will be your um, instructors during your discussion sessions and some of us will be reaching out to you just to learn more about your project. So if you want to learn about us you can go to forestadaptation.org slash team. Really quickly a quick introduction uh, about me. Uh, my name is Danielle Shannon. I work at NIAX. I've worked at NIAX since 2011. Uh, I'm also staff at Michigan Technological University in the College of Forest Resources. Uh, and yeah, I help people think about climate change and climate change adaptation and like to think about uh, the, those topics when it relates to forested watersheds and wetlands and other types of forest communities that you know, people are thinking about water. So Maria, do you want to give us a quick introduction to yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Maria Genoviak. It's really great to see uh, so many people in this class. It's it's really just awesome what a great turnout we've had. I am the Deputy Director for the Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science. Um, so I've been with the organization uh, 12 going on 13 years and um, I'm also the coordinator for our climate change response framework project in uh, New England and northern New York. So I'll be um, hosting a, helping host a couple of the um, lectures during this series and then the Tuesday discussion session, or excuse me, Wednesday discussion session as well. Um, and so um, again, just thanks. We, we knew that with everything being so topsy-turvy, there weren't going to be a lot of opportunities for professional development um, as maybe people would have been expecting. And so we decided coming off of our winter course to do this again. And it's been really fabulous to see all of the interest from all of you. And so, you know, just, yeah, keep, let us know how this is working and everything we can do um, as we go through the course to make it worth your time. Great. Thanks, Maria. Okay, and so I'm sure many of you are, you know, well aware of our organization, but just in case you're not, Maria and I work for the Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science, and we're an organization that really is a boundary-spanning organization connecting academic research and practical information that can help support land managers to make on-the-ground climate-informed decisions. So we're really coming from that perspective of not only climate change and carbon management, thinking about that newest and greatest science, but we're strategically trying to create resources and opportunities to help connect that to the management realm. Our organization is um, chartered by multiple different organizations from uh, three branches of the Forest Service, uh, different academic and uh, universities from Michigan Technological University, University of Minnesota, University of Vermont, but also NGOs like American Forests and National uh, Council for Air and Stream Improvement and um, the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission as well. So, you know, we're a really diverse group, not only thinking about climate change adaptation, but also landscape modeling and carbon sciences. Our group is also supported by a really cool uh, effort through the USDA, uh, the USDA climate hubs. And we, NIAX, actually run a climate hub that specifically thinks about climate change and forest management across the Midwest and the Northeast. And we help to, to provide that expertise to the Midwest hub and the Northeast hub. Um, we're, we're really lucky to be part of this huge effort. And um, if you are a USDA employee, you know, we're here to help build your capacity when it comes to thinking about climate change. So please reach out to us after the course as well. Okay, 
So today's agenda, uh, do a little bit of welcome introductions and some basic overview of not only who we are, um, the material that we'll be covering of the course, then we'll dive into uh, right into the adaptation workbook and start thinking about the work that all of you will be doing in the next week as you're thinking about step one, which is the first step of five in the adaptation workbook. And then lastly, you know, we'll run through some tips of uh, things that you might want to consider while you're setting up your account and setting up your project in the adaptation workbook. Okay, so this course is a uh, is a is a real course you know we'll be meeting over the next several weeks uh, it's like eight weeks all together and we have some core objectives and the objectives are really to help you integrate climate change considerations into real world projects specifically those related to natural resource management maybe forest management wetland conservation or wild wildlife habitat considerations we want uh, to help support you as you're identifying not only local climate change impacts and challenges and opportunities that could affect the projects that you're bringing to this course, uh, but support you in developing actions that are specifically tailored to those changing conditions as you're preparing you know, your adaptation responses. And in the end, we're hoping that you leave with a really cool climate informed project. You know, it is a real world project and now you're adding this really cool climate change layer and filter into that whole project plan. We will uh, provide a, a section within the course that is specifically focused on communication. So we're hoping that you'll leave feeling maybe a little bit more confident and have some more tools in your tool belt when it comes to having those difficult and those challenging conversations with our stakeholders related to climate change. And you know, probably the coolest part of this course for all of us is that we are here for you. So all those folks that I showed you in that original slide, you know, all of us are here to uh, provide training support during the, the course and post, you know, we're here to create relationships and networks. So, you know, we hope that you don't leave the course thinking that you're alone doing this work. We're, we're hoping to always sort of be your phone a friend if you need it. Getting to the nitty gritty, I sent out the getting started guide for the course. And so this, the getting started guide has all of the, the detailed information related to our expectations of how this course will be run. But really quickly, we're hoping that, you know, you'll participate in all seven weeks of the course. And if you can't, that's totally understandable, but just, you know, give us a heads up so that we know that you're, you know, we can account for everybody. We um, have, uh, offered or we've applied for continuing education credits and we're not going to keep track of attendance in the lecture sessions but we're going to ask that you keep track of your uh, attendance in the lecture sessions and your attendance in the discussion sessions and then at the end of the course we'll ask you to fill out a form um, stating you know what days you you came to the course in order for you to receive those full credits so just keep track you know on your calendar in a little notebook of all the times that you were with us and we'll make sure you get those credits the sessions themselves will consist of sort of a weekly check-in where we'll be walking through the adaptation workbook together in, in this format on Mondays in the afternoons every week one week will be a break between now and June. So, you know, we'll see it go from the mud season to hopefully the flowers and the sun. <laughs> we'll all be there together. And then, um, but then we'll be interspersed about four times throughout the course. We'll all get together and have these really fun discussion sections uh, where we will not only share a little bit about our own projects, but get to have those nitty gritty conversations that, you know, maybe you've got some questions that you really want to ask, or maybe folks just want to share. The, the things that they've been thinking about. So we'll have uh, one hour sessions four times throughout the course in April, in May, in June. And the last one will be uh, a presentation that you will be giving. So again, this is included in the Getting Started Guide. Uh, basically, we all come to the weekly session or we watch the recording, and then we all make sure we come to those uh, discussion sessions that happen Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, or on Wednesday. I sent out all of your assignments. If those assignments are starting to make you nervous because you're not sure you'll be able to make the Wednesday meeting, even though you said you could, just let me know. 
because we can switch you. I've already done that this morning, so <laughs> I can do it. It's no problem. We just really want to make sure that you have an opportunity and that we have enough uh, opportunities to be flexible for anyone's schedule. So not only are we expecting you to join us a couple times during the course, but we will expect that you will follow along in the adaptation workbook. And we're calling this homework, but it's essentially, you know, keeping you accountable. You want to be part of this course. We're going to be doing bite-sized chunks going through the workbook. So we're going to ask that you complete your homework in a timely fashion so that every week we as a group move forward into the different steps of the adaptation workbook. Um, we know everyone's busy. We know it's difficult to do homework, but um, I know you can do it. And so it, it'll just be better for you if you're if if you're ready for those steps every week. Uh, more conversation about expectations. Um, I think you know this. You know it's really hard to be engaged in an online session, but uh, I think we're all getting more practice at that. So yeah, I just had to close my email, mute my cell phone, and put us shut my door and hope that nobody comes in. Uh, but you know we just got to get in the mindset when we're doing the course, when we're doing homework. So just don't forget that um, sometimes you got to make space and time for these things. Other really cool things is that these discussion sessions will create opportunities for you to connect with different people in the class. And these can be people that you can maybe create future collaborations with or share ideas with. And this happened in the last course. People actually got to meet each other in real life at, at common regional meetings that they go to, but now they knew that person and they could start striking some more collaboration. So we're hoping that there's some additional benefits to this course for you at the end. Getting to the continuing education credits, uh, we have applied and are eligible for several different uh, credits and you can choose at the end of the course if you'd like the SAF credits or the International Society of Arbicultural I cannot say that, ESA uh, credits. Um, if there's other organizations that you belong to that you would like us to apply uh, for credit, we would be happy to do that. Just send us a note to Maria or I. Uh, but again, you, it's going to be on you to keep track of your attendance and, uh, and, and we'll make sure you get those credits and the certificate at the end of the course. Okay, I kind of talked fast through that. Does anyone have any questions at this time? Uh, possibly one from me. Uh, I could not do that flip thing. Mm. The if, flip grid. Mm -hmm. I don't know if others had the same problem, but I got uh, uh, file not found error. Okay, I'll look into that and send an email, uh, a note about that in the follow-up email. I've got a question. Are you guys going to send out a calendar appointment for the discussions? I don't know if I yeah. missed that. Yeah. It was a, a late, uh, I will make sure you do get them. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. <laughs> Just remember that you have one tomorrow if you're in the Tuesday session. <laughs> But yeah, I'll make sure you get them for the future meetings, definitely. Do we log on in the same platform? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Same room, Easy enough. same room, yep. same link, yep. Got it. I have problem, uh, I, I have no idea which session, session I am in. Um, when I send the you're calendar appointment, you will know. <laughs> yeah, you're Wednesday morning, Jake. Wednesday morning? Oh. Yeah. All right, but we, yeah, we, we've, I mean, I'm sure you guys can all understand we, we did turn this around pretty quickly. And so Danielle's been um, getting a lot of people in even at the last minute. So I think we will get the calendar um, invitations out. If you don't know what your assignment is, check your emails. It may have came, come in this morning. And if not, um, just let us know. We do have them. And then again, if, if, if your assignment doesn't work, let us know. We'll be toggling people around a little bit and firming everything up this week. I get so many emails that sometimes I just don't know whether it accidentally went in the trash, whatever. Yep. So that's why it's good to start. Great. All right. All right. So. Um, wanted to now what we'll do is we, we covered some of the course details and, and logistics. What we'll do now is um, 
and just talk a little bit about this first week of, of um, a little bit about, I guess, what we'll be doing throughout the, the whole course and then what we'll be doing specifically this week. So it's adaptation planning and practices. So the topic of this course is climate change adaptation. Just to define things up front, adaptation is the adjustment of um, systems in preparation uh, or in response to climate change, right? So we're adapting uh, to what climate change is, is bringing our way. And um, really what we think about is adaptation actions are uh, in designed to intentionally address climate change impacts and vulnerabilities in order to meet goals and objectives. And so you'll hear that I say that word um, intentionally a lot. So it's not just that we're doing things that happen to be good for climate change on accident, but that we've specifically thought about climate change risks, um, how that affects our sites, how that affects our management um, goals and objectives, and are proactively doing things to help reduce those risks um, and, and ensure these systems are capable of, of responding to future conditions. And really what you'll see is that ecosystem-based adaptation is really similar to activities that are already being done for uh, sustainable management, conservation, restoration. And so we know we have people coming from different uh, maybe uh, disciplines, backgrounds, but it's going to feel you know, very similar. It's gonna build off a lot of natural resource um, and forest management principles that you've probably been practicing for a long time. And so again, um, you know, adaptation actions can span the whole gamut from, you know, the things we're doing now, maybe they're just more important in the future because of climate change. Or, um, you know, we'll also though identify maybe small tweaks where you can improve the effectiveness of your actions, small changes you can make to better respond to future conditions. Or maybe we have to uncover new and different um, actions that might even seem wild and crazy. And so, over time, um, through this course, what we'll be finding is, you know, what this uh, graph looks like for you in terms of uh, the management um, conservation activities that you're doing and how you may be adjusting them after thinking about climate change in your particular projects. For this course, um, we didn't mail them out, but if you had to think about like essentially having a textbook, we use this document called the Forest Adaptation Resources. This is a document, we originally published it in 2012, we did an update in 2016, and this essentially forms the basis for the information we're going to be um, providing through this course. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about the resources that are in it in terms of um, kind of as we go through the um, course. But um, part of it is the adaptation strategies and approaches. And then another part is the adaptation workbook. And so um, this is a document that we'll link to in the resources. And if you ever encounter difficulties going through the adaptation workbook in the online format, it might be helpful to you know, have this book um, document uh, bookmarked. So that way you can go back and look at it and just kind of see what the paper copy looks like um, because it might be a little bit more approachable in some contexts. So this is the adaptation workbook process. This is in that Forest Adaptation Resources document. We've then converted it over into the adaptation workbook online tool. And this is essentially how we've built the course is that we're going to go through each week um, for the first seven weeks of the of instruction. We're gonna go through each week and do one step at a time. And that way we can break this um, cycle down into different pieces and we can approach it um, in this stepwise fashion. This works really well because the adaptation workbook, essentially the reason we developed it into five steps is that climate change was, uh, feels really daunting. It's a big topic and a lot of people really struggle with how do you um, implement adaptation. So we developed the adaptation workbook to provide this structured flexibility where we essentially take a planning process, we take an adaptive management process, and we broke it apart into these different steps. And then we address climate change in each of these five steps. So this will be what we will do for the first five weeks. Then we'll hit um, climate change communication and sharing our projects at the end. 
And so you'll see um, at different steps, um, step two, when we think about how uh, climate change affects, when we assess climate change impacts and vulnerabilities, we bring in resources like vulnerability assessments, climate change information. In step four, we'll be bringing in resources like the menus of adaptation strategies and approaches. So we won't worry about what all these steps are today, but this is essentially our roadmap for the next several weeks. And then, essentially, when we, you know, go through this process of using the adaptation workbook and you've thought about climate change in your project, um, what we've done is we've developed adaptation demonstrations. And these are, um, these dots on the map are places where um, managers, uh, landowners, people have used the adaptation workbook in their own work, um, whether, you know, you can see all different types of, excuse me, <clears throat> you can see all different types of landowners, they all had different management goals and objectives, different kinds of sites, and so these are browsable, uh, a lot of these are browsable on our forest adaptation website in terms of our demonstration pages, and so you can see a really wide variety of the types of projects that have already gone through this process. You can search and see what projects might be similar um, situations to yours in terms of maybe a certain management issue or a certain state or location. And then after you've gone through this course, we'll be able to, you know, point to, you know, you're having a dot on the map and maybe even feature you in our website as well. And this is really important because it helps just give people a sense of the really rich um, breadth of adaptation activities that are out there, helps build a community of practice among people who are actively working on these issues so that we have that, um, you know, to be able to build on this going forward. Oh, and so there's where they are, um, the ones that we have on our website, so you can check those out. And I want to say what uh, Shannon said before, the help of you guys is incredible. I did the course last year and couldn't attend all the sessions. And uh, Maria and Todd at that time, it was fantastic. So um, it's fun to reach out to them. Thanks, Jake, for the testimonial. We did not set him up to do that, so thanks. Um, I'll stop quickly and see if there are any questions. All right, and then I'll show you what you guys are doing today, and then we can take a bigger stop. All right, so in that adaptation workbook cycle, the first um, step is to define your location, project, and time frames. So that's what we're going to focus on this week. Um, we decided when we were developing this course, um, and really a lot of our workshops are project-based, and that's because we want people to bring something that's relevant um, to the work they're doing. You know, you're all busy professionals, you have a million things on your desk, and so we want you to bring something that is you know, literally on your desk or, you know, wherever you have it on your computer and work through it because the most effective way to think about something like climate change is to learn by doing. So what we wanted, uh, what we want is for each of you working either as an individual or a team to identify a project that you'll be using for this course so that way you can actively go through the workbook, you know, one step per week um, as, the, as the course was designed. When we, we had you register, we had you kind of put together an idea on what we thought, um, what you thought a potential project would be. And so you'll be able to refine that this week um, and then essentially put that into the adaptation workbook online tool. So what I'll do here is describe kind of what we're looking for in terms of projects and um, the step one homework, excuse me, homework assignment. We'll have more discussion during the discussion sessions on what makes a good project, and then you'll be able to put that this week into your homework to get your project started in the actual online workbook. So step one is just where are you working? What are you trying to achieve? And so it's really focusing on just identifying what your project is um, and setting it up so that way you're going to be able to go through the workbook you know, in all of the subsequent steps. And so, um, we, like I said, we want you to do a real world project. We also wanna make sure that it is in what we're calling a bite-sized format so that you can tackle it in the online course. 
So the adaptation workbook as a, as a con construct, as a, as a tool, can be used in all sorts of um, situations of, you know, uh, really small parcels up to, you know, we've used it for tens of thousands of acres for forest service, um, you know, landscape projects, integrated resource management projects. And so the scale can really vary. But you're not going to be able to do a 10,000 acre project in seven weeks. And so what we want to do is help you figure out something that relates to your work that's going to be a good fit for this particular class and the workbooks you can keep um, up with us as we go and it's really useful. And then you'll be able to use the online course um, or will you be able to use the online workbook over again as you need to. Let's check in that chat. Don't worry, we're getting there. So in terms of your project, um, we're looking for something that's not too big, not too small. So the 10,000 acres, even thousands of acres, is probably going to be too big for this course. It's just not going to fit very well in terms of the compressed time frame and all of the things you're probably juggling besides this course. Um, too small, if you get to like, you know, a small backyard, you can do it, but you might be kind of just overanalyzing something. Um, so what we find is that sizes that work best is, you know, if you're doing a forest management plan or some sort of um, planning document for um, maybe a few dozen, few hundred acres um, tends to work. If you are working in an urban system, it might be something like the street trees in a particular neighborhood, a portion of a city, um, or maybe um, a certain kind of topic with Maybe you go citywide, but you kind of narrow the scope of the analysis a little bit. We'll be helping you figure this out, you know, again today and tomorrow if you have, um, this week if you have questions. But again, nothing too huge. Um, a couple hundred acres would be about, uh, high end in most situations. Then once you define where you're going to be, you're going to define, you're going to set up your project in terms of management topics and units. Um, the adaptation workbook calls these management topics. Um, so you'll see that when, when you see the, um, go get into the workbook or you look at the tutorials that Danielle is going to send out. Um, and by management topics, it can be a physical area, like a stand or a, a unit, um, or it can be a um, conceptual topic, like an area of interests, like invasive species or woodland tur or wood turtle habitat, um, things like these. Um, you'll see that when you develop your project, you drop a pin. Depending on where your uh, pin falls, if you are in an area where we have a lot of um, vulnerability ass assessment information, particularly if you're working in forests or urban for forests or forested watersheds, you'll also have some predefined forest type information that's available to you um, because we've really built out the um, content of the website in some areas. And then you can use the management units and topics to also um, split out your project area into, you know, again, these different units that make it easier to manage. And so this is really going to help you think about, um, you know, what aspects of the project may need additional consideration. Um, so you might have some, you know, again, you might have some units um, like in this picture where they're going to be geographically based. So something like uh, riparian forest, um, you know, there's a campground, there's a prayer, you know, these are geographic locations on the map. Um, you may also have something like infrastructure or invasive species or maybe recreational trails that might actually go across, you know, an entire project area and really be more of that idea of a topic. Um, I think you will, you know, have pretty good sense of what this is, particularly if you're already starting with a management planning document. Um, but again, you know, setting up your project to think about um, how is it going to be organized early on can definitely make things clearer as you go through the process. So then once you set up your project in terms of where are you, how are you kind of chunking your landscape or your area up into different um, topics or units, then we go into identifying the goals and objectives. And so somebody talked about this a bit. There were some definitions in your step one worksheets that you, your pre-work worksheets that you completed during registration. But this is a really important piece um, because it's something that we 
yeah, get asked a lot and we spend a lot of time on. So management goals are broad general statements. Um, they're usually not quantifiable and they're really talking about the desired state or process that you're going, um, that you're trying to achieve. And so think about this as sort of your um, wish list conditions in terms of um, you know, your, your hopes and dreams. So, you know, in an, air, in an urban area, it might be something like increasing street tree cover, or you might be thinking about increasing forest vegetation in a riparian area, um, or restoring watershed or floodplain connectivity. So it's not quantifiable. It's, again, this kind of big idea, um, a trajectory or a direction that you wanna, want to head. <clears throat> And then typically, so for management goals, I guess I forgot to say, for management goals, you'll want at least one goal for each forest type or land use or management topic. You know, what, do you, what is your goal? What are your hopes and dreams for that particular area? So then management objectives are um, nested below goals and they're concise statements of measurable um, planned results that are helping you get to your goals. So you can have one objective or you can have multiple objectives per goal. And just in terms of the whole project, generally I'd recommend trying to keep it to about three objectives per management unit and no more than 12 for, pro for your whole project. Um, just because then you start to see your project really uh, inflate. So just to talk a little bit more about objectives. We talk about objectives being SMART. So it's, if you have heard of this before, SMART stands for specific, um, measurable, we want them to start to be quantifiable, achievable, really looking in these more midterm, medium term time frames, short time frames as well, relevant and time bound. And you'll see even in the adaptation workbook, there's a spot for you to put time. <laughs> So a few examples of what this looks like. All right, so let's see. These are a couple that we've pulled directly from projects that we've had go through the courses before. So management goal could be something like improving habitat con uh, conditions and connectivity for aquatic organisms. So really, you know, can we get that stream connected so that things can move up and downstream? Um, that would be a goal. Again, big idea. Management objective would be something like replacing stream crossings that are a barrier to aquatic organism passage um, with structures that enhance stream connectivity and flood resilience. Time frame 15 years. <clears throat> you can see a couple other examples here. Um, another one I think is like just really good because it kind of gets that idea is, you know, reducing invasive species cover. You know, you almost all of you probably have some sort of goal related to in remove, reducing invasive species cover. Many of you will. That's a goal, it's the direction. But an objective might be something like reducing area covered by invasive buckthorn from you know, 10% or more to less than 5%. You, so you start to get a quantify, start to get something that you can measure. When you're putting together your goals and objectives, um, again, you're going to be able to revisit those, you should revisit those sheets that you put together initially when you registered for the course and see how they fit. What we're going to be working on and looking for is helping you find that Goldilocks zone of um, not too fuzzy and broad, you know, something that's really actionable and useful, but not too specific that you're just saying what you're going to do on the ground. Because if you know what you're going to do on the ground next spring, it's not maybe the best use of your time to go through the workbook. You know, we wanna help you kind of decide what those actions are going to be. So, <clears throat> a management objective. So this Goldilocks zone, something we might see um, here, let's say the goal is to enhance habitat conditions in Northern hardwood forest, broad habitat for wildlife. Um, so you might put together a management objective called, that says something like promote resiliency of tree species. Well, that's too vague. That feels like a goal. It's unclear what resiliency means. It doesn't meet those SMART criteria. Um, it sounds nice, but it's not really helpful in terms of helping you achieve your goal, which is what the objective is supposed to do. Um, you know, 
on the other end, something that might be um, too specific would be, well, I'm going to conduct a timber stand improvement on 10 acres to release desired hardwood species in five years. Um, and that starts to get in that tactics. And we want to be able to help you through the course develop those actions, those tactics. So we don't want you to get too specific at this stage. One way that I can tell, sort of a tip off to me, that I can tell that you're starting to get too specific is if you have an action, and particularly if the time frame is less than five years, because that tells me you're just kind of like going straight to, I want to get this done on the ground. Um, and that's kind of a, a, something that flags it for me that it might be too specific. Um, a good example of a goal in the middle would be something like increasing structural diversity through a series of forest harvests to promote regeneration at 20 years. So you're starting to get more specific in terms of the actions. Um, you have a time frame on there, but you're not like diving too far into the details. And again, all of the coordinators, the instructors will be helping you, you know, today through the discussions and through, you know, the next couple of weeks, make sure you have your setup well. So we will cover that. I have one or two more slides and then we'll take questions. Let's see here. So um, again, here's just another example. These will be in the slides, but um, really just thinking about how to kind of hit that spot of, of not so broad that you're not saying anything too specific, not so specific that you could just go out and do it tomorrow. Lastly, um, in terms of, um, I guess, the sessions as you're putting together your step, one is um, this course is designed to be a climate change filter. What we want you to do is be thinking about, you know, the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis now and then thinking about climate change and then thinking about how is that work you know, different or better, you know, more climate informed on the other side of this process. So as you're putting your goals and objectives together, one thing that we see is we see people who want to put, you know, things about, I want a goal or an objective to be resilient or to be climate adapted. And we don't want to see that in the goals and objectives because we want all of your goals and objectives, you know, on the end side to be resilient and climate adapted. And so we want your goals and objectives to be really specific to um, ecosystem conditions, ecosystem services, benefits, you know, the things you want out of your system, the things that people value in your particular place. Then we'll think about climate change. And then on the other side of this, you know, the idea is that the whole product, your whole adaptation plan at the end of the course is going to be addressing climate change so that you'll have systems that are better able to cope with future climate conditions. And then um, just a few last things to keep in mind. You know, if possible, I didn't say it already, but use goals and objectives you already have. So if you've, you've picked up a management plan or some sort of document already uh, in place, you already have that work done. Call it good, maybe touch it up a little bit, but you're set. You don't need to think too hard about this step if you already have those documents. Um, again, they don't need to be related to climate change. We'll do that later. Um, you can split your goals and objectives across an entire property or project area, or they can be specific to a particular topic or land use. And then again, push yourself to look into the future 10 or 20 years or beyond. If you know, really, uh, if you are just developing a list of actions for the next five years, it's going to be a little bit harder to think about climate change. You know, so really try and push your time horizon out a little bit longer and that will make um, your project be set up smoother to think about climate risks and adaptation. All right. Danielle, did you want to add anything that I may have skipped over? No, you did a great job, thanks. I guess at All this right. time, if anyone has any questions on the step one, goals, objectives, that really cool climate change filter graphic Maria just created. <laughs> uh, can you say again what the R was in small? The R in? Smart, relevant. <laughs> totally relevant, <forgot> yeah. <laughs> yep, and we will send out the slides. Um, we'll have all, you'll have all the slides, the recording, everything out by the end of the day today. So, yeah. So it was 
relevant and time bound was the T. I got the time bound. Yes. Yeah. Relevant then. Could not remember. Question. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned uh, three to twelve objectives, but how many goals would would be right? I would say half a dozen ish. I'm trying to think off the top of my head in terms of projects. Um, I would rather have them be, the goals are going to be a bit bigger. So I would rather have there be kind of a few good ones that really get at the heart of the issue than several smaller ones. Yeah, so. and, and one thing we can do is, uh, Maria mentioned we are willing to share some completed adaptation workbooks, and so you can thumb through that adaptation plan and see what the formatting looks like when you add in multiple goals, because it can make your plan exponentially larger if you go beyond, you know, five goals. Uh, so that could be another thing you could look at when you're developing your set of goals. And three to 12 objectives for each goal or total? Probably total. Probably about 12 total. I mean, these are real, I mean, I don't go, it's not meant to be sort of super literal, but just as a guideline in terms of, like Danielle said, once you start getting kind of beyond that, I think it can start to be unwieldy at the end. Um, one thing though, is if you feel like as you're setting up your project, like, you know, you have, you know, um, five goals and 15 objectives, like if that's what you identify, like, go for it. If you can't, if for some reason it starts to get a little bit too cumbersome towards the end of the course, or if like your schedule um, ends up having you time constrained, you might end up picking a few of those to focus on through the whole course. We just don't want people to develop really big projects and then get, feel like they're behind, um, which sometimes happens, particularly, you know, the course is pretty accelerated and then there's just so much happening right now too. Mm -hmm. um, so people have a lot of de um, demands. And now that you're in the course, all of the course materials that are uploaded within the adaptation workbook will be available to you. Where, you know, once the course is complete, they stay in the system. So if you take a smaller angle of the project now, but you know you want to go back to it and elaborate on those ideas, you'll still have the links to the recordings. You'll still have the links to the presentation slides to help you, you know, remind yourself as you move through it again. Can you guys just clarify the homework time frame? You mentioned due Monday for the week before, so this afternoon is due for next week. Yep, yep. So every week we'll, on Monday, at the end of the day, we'll start a new step. And so that will, if you sort of get things done within that one week time frame, you'll be ready to think about you know, the new step within the adaptation workbook, and there are five steps. We will have a, a week-long break in the middle of this course uh, that sometimes people use that time to sort of catch up. Mm -hmm. Did you mean the five to 15 or 12 goals and objectives just for the workshop, or do you think this is a, a more general good advice to keep objectives a little down and possibly try to get certain objectives within one in a way formulation or is, did you mean it just for this work more for this class more for this course because what we find is that for people who are working on say a forest management plan for a, a private landowner um, where it's maybe you know a couple hundred acres that that seems to fit well if you're working on um, a national wildlife refuge and maybe it's like you know maybe it's thousands of acres it's going to be too big and so maybe taking a compartment or a topic um, within that or a, a community type within maybe a broader area helps constrain it down um, to that piece and so that's what we're looking at um, kind of and so yeah, so what we'll just say is, well, I think we want to wrap up a few more slides, but, um, you know, Danielle and I can stay on 
um, afterwards for to answer questions a little bit more and then again we're going to be essentially you're going to get you know one of us as the instructors who's going to be tracking your project and so if you reach out to us with questions we can have somebody work with you directly and taking a look at things and we're going to be starting rolling that out um, today and tom tomorrow as we kind of go into the discussions and the discussions also have a more time to talk about this tomorrow and Wednesday. Yep. So don't worry. I got, uh, I, I noted some chats in the chat box that folks are feeling either uh, maybe like they scoped out a project that was a little too big uh, for their project area or maybe they think that their project that they brought is too small. Give yourself some time to think about this. You know, we'll send some examples in the follow-up email for you to see how others have done it. And really, if you're motivated to think about this topic, you're going to find uh, a sweet spot that is a, a, you know, a good size property that you can focus on. And, you know, if any time you want to draw back on that project, the adaptation workbook uh, automatically saves your ideas so you can go back in and change the size of that lot to something smaller or something bigger and you know, move through the steps. Um, don't worry, give yourself some time. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be a night, tomorrow and Wednesday will be a nice opportunity to sort of share more mm -hmm. about our projects. Okay, so let's move on, Maria. We've got just three more slides. Um, Usually, and for those who have attended our online course in the past, you might remember we would do an online tutorial uh, using the Adaptation Workbook online platform within these lectures. What we found is that it really takes a lot of time and a lot of people haven't found them incredibly useful. So <laughs> what we're going to try is this one slide reminder, some tips, some tricks of things that you might want to keep in mind when you're merely using the adaptation workbook online. So aside from the process that Maria uh, described, just getting used to the system can take some time. Well, before I get started on these tips, I want to let you know that we have created sort of a cookbook tutorial PDF, and I've included that within the adaptation workbook itself for you to find, but I will include it in the follow-up email as an attachment. So you can have that on your desk. You can say, okay, I'm gonna do step one. How do I even get started on step one? What are all these buttons mean? Um, and you can find that information in the PDF. If you're not a PDF person, you will find within the adaptation workbook online tool, little videos and we can show you those um, in the discussion section. Uh, and the videos just help to show you how to move through the, the online tool and we'll sort of give you the hints of, you know, the different tools, the little buttons and the icons, and we'll give you some of those tips too. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement. We're gonna give ourselves some time to settle in <laughs> before we make rash decisions about quitting the course. Don't quit the course. Okay, so <laughs> um, first, you know, the first time we're going to do this, pro tips. All right, so when you get to the Adaptation Workbook online course, all of you have been preloaded into the course itself. I used your registration email that you provided as the email that um, the Adaptation Workbook is looking for. So when you make an account, try to use that email that you used when you, cre when you signed up, when you registered for the course. If you forgot what email you used or you use a different email normally and that was a fluke just let me know just be like hey i signed into the adaptation workbook i create an account and i and i'm not seeing an option for me to enter into this course now the way that you see that option is when you go to add a project so even if you are pre-registered even if you are now part of the course you have to actually create a project for you to see that you need to associate it to our course just feel like I'm getting confusing here, but just try it, try it out, and that let us know if that doesn't work. Okay, so if you go into the getting started guide, there is also a tutorial on how to uh, create an account and how to associate it to the online course. So we've we sort of put these instructions out there in many different places, and I'll put a reminder in the follow up email. Okay, so now you're in the adaptation workbook itself and you're creating your project. Just remember uh, that all of the things that Maria pointed out as far as complexity. And so this is your opportunity to sort of 
you know, describe your project. If you're within our eco regions where we have um, some climate change information related to forests, you might see a huge list of forest types up here. You can add those to your project. If you, if you know, if you have a sugar maple stand on your property, you can add sugar maple, you know, start to fill out those key characteristics of that project. Uh, we, we might provide some management units. You can grab some of those. If you have a cemetery you're looking at, you might see that pop up. You can add that to your project. The entire workbook is customizable. So if you see anything up here, you're gonna have to add it to your project for it to stick. Otherwise, it's just an option. It's just one of the many menus that we're gonna serve up to you in this course. Remember, um, to reduce complexity when you're creating your project, to try to start out with just a few, you know, management types and management topics. You might have like a national forest that has 18 different forest types. Well, we would ask that maybe you keep it to just three for right now. Um, you know, a part of that key focal area that you're thinking about just to reduce the noise. And then once you get used to thinking about climate change, you can start adding in multiple uh, forest types and management topics. But give yourself some time, start small. You can always go back and add more. Um, again, uh, when you create goals and objectives, they can apply to your management units. So you can have big goals and then more discrete objectives, and then you can associate them to the different forest types or the habitats that you're also creating. This isn't going to make a lot of sense to you yet because you probably haven't dug into the Adaptation Workbook online tool, but when you do, you can come back to this video and, and you know, get these tips and tricks or you'll get the PDF of the presentation slides as well. Um, so hopefully this is helpful to you and um, let us know if you're running into any difficulties and we're here to help. Yep, next slide. So like we just talked about, um, you know, this is honor system. You're not getting a grade for this course, so you can move at whatever pace you wanna move. We suggest you try to get each step done each week just so that you don't feel overwhelmed, but things come up. So don't be too hard on yourself. But if you need a target so that you can stay accountable, we would like you to get these things completed by the, the Monday before lecture. So anytime before the next lecture, get your step done. For this week's assignment, uh, we're going to ask that you introduce yourself. There's so many of us here. It's, it's really nice to see all of your faces now, but I'm very curious like who you are and where you're from and, and what you're thinking about. So we'd ask that you create a very quick video, less than one minute, just to introduce yourself, tell us where you are, tell us the things that you're interested and excited to, to, to uh, experience in this course. And you'll use the Flipgrid website for that. And I'll look into it to make sure there's no technical issues associated to that. We'd ask that you complete your step one. Many of you have a head start on this because you completed your worksheet before the course. So use that to, the, to your advantage. Uh, you know, complete the homework. There's like a couple of questions after you finish your workbook step. It's really quick, just bubble button type stuff radio dials, um, but then also keep track of your attendance for continuing educa education credits. And next slide, um, looking ahead, we will meet again tomorrow, Tuesday, April 21st and Wednesday, April 22nd. I have sent you your discussion session assignments, but if you haven't received those or if they are a conflict, they present conflicts to you, just let me know and we can put you in a different group. It's no big deal. Uh, the next lecture will be next week, April 27th. In our discussion sections, um, just be prepared to introduce yourself, you know, elevator pitch, nothing big. Think of a couple keywords that might help describe your project and um, and then we'll be ready to go. Uh, we're just gonna, those are free flowing, so it's no big deal. All right, well, thank you to everyone who joined us today. This is a huge group. Uh, we're really excited to get to know you more. Um, thanks for being a part of this. And so we'll see you next week and also on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thank you guys for setting this up.